Hi everyone, um, this is Katie with Empowering Astrology and let's look at the astrology of July 8th through 14th, 2019. And I wanted to connect with you all today because we are not only between the eclipses, which is nothing to worry about, it's just a time every six months when we are in that very pregnant, liminal, anything is possible in between uh, space between the eclipses. And there's a sense of like, if we think it, it's going to happen, you know, so it reminds me of Ghostbusters, which even to this day is one of my favorite movies. It's like, empty your minds out. Don't, don't think of anything. Um, you know, but I'm being silly, but um, there is like a magic in the air. And I want people to sense of what this time is, that with the eclipses, we, and I've said this, I think, in, in previous videos, that it's as if we are at a theater and we're watching the curtain come down. There's a sense of movement behind the stage. The lights have dimmed. There's, you know, we can hear things coming in and out. And that's what eclipse season does. Now, is eclipse season always easy? No. And I've, and I've heard from a couple of people that they've experienced maybe some not so pleasant things as eclipse season. It's when our life turns on a, turns on a dime, so to speak, or as the phrase goes. And I know that one of my clients messaged me today that she unfortunately lost her job. And that's not to say that that's what eclipse season is all about, but there's some, the narrative has changed. There's a little bit of drama that's seeded into eclipse season. And this week in particular, today in particular, as I record this, um, we can even look at the astrology right now. The moon is in Libra and we have just um, come up to the, what's called the first quarter moon. And the moon, when it reaches 10 degrees of Libra. Right now it's at nine degrees of Libra. When it reaches 10 degrees of Libra, we are having what's called the opening square to the July 2nd solar eclipse. So this day and maybe even tomorrow as the moon gets to 24 Libra, which is what's called a, a, another square to um, the July 16th eclipse degree, we may be seeing things. We may not. You know, it's important to if you journal to, to be aware of what you're experiencing right now, the conversations that you're having, the emotions that you're feeling, the people that you're interacting with, because it's part of a thread. It's part of a story. And I mentioned this on my, on Twitter. It's when we have an eclipse, um, if we want to know what the eclipse is about, of course, we want to see which sign that it's in and we want to know which house that it's in for our chart. But every transit in astrology always goes back to the natal placement. So it's also important, and maybe this is a little bit of an intermediate point in astrology. Uh, if you know your lunar nodes, meaning where was your north node when you were born? Where was your south node when you were born? The lunar, the story of your lunar nodes, it always kind of, you know, every eclipse kind of comes back to that. So for, for me, I've got a north node in the ninth house. I have it in Virgo. I've been in um, contact with a book agent about writing a book. So ninth house, publishing, Virgo, teaching. And of course, there's an element of teaching for everything that I do. Um, but this eclipse, this past solar eclipse is in Cancer. Cancer is a sign that's ruled by the moon. We're feeling very emotional, very squishy. Um, so this might be an emotional day. Buttons might be getting pressed. Um, I wanted to kind of put that on your radar. I mean, even today, and I didn't mention this in my daily update, um, Venus is square Chiron today. And Chiron's a little bit of a uh, subtle influence, but um, Chiron is, is that psychic scar tissue that we have. We all have something. And um, we something that keeps getting pressed over and over again. You know, I'm, I'm Chiron Taurus generation. Um, so for me, that button is around value. It's around worth. And, you know, for me, I got an email this morning from somebody who said that what I was putting out there didn't have enough substance, which I thought was hysterical because I put so much out there for free. Hmm. And, um, but maybe, I don't know, maybe it needs to have more substance to it. Um, 
I don't really know how much more, but it hit a button and I'm a human being. You all are human beings too. So maybe that, that button is getting pressed today. It's something that's very deep. Chiron shows a story, uh, a story of healing that keeps coming up, you know, coming up over and over again. You know, you might be, let's say Chiron and Gemini, um, and that might be about voice and being heard and communication and choice. You know, for me, Chiron and Taurus is so much about self-worth and value. My Chiron and Taurus generation, you're 1977 to, I believe, 1984-ish, if I'm remembering my astrology correctly. Um, so if you Chiron and Cancer, it's about feeling loved and feeling nurtured. If you're Chiron and Cancer, you're a little bit more of the late 80s and into uh, the 90s, baby. Um, that's like a quick little thing about Chiron. I've been wanting to teach a webinar on Chiron. That's, I think, maybe one of my next offerings um, before I go away in August. Um, but shameless plug for my webinar. Um, I am doing one on Pluto this weekend. And as I've done before, you can always still register, even if you can't make the live call. And I want it to be a little bit more of a journey because Pluto touches on things that there's an information level of Pluto, but there's a feeling level of Pluto. Pluto deals with the soul. And one of the reasons I made this uh, webinar this week about Pluto is because we've got what's called a Sun-Pluto opposition coming up on Saturday. Is it Saturday or Sunday? Sunday the 14th. And so this whole week, in addition to feeling a little bit like our life is kind of changing, the, the, the furniture is moving, we may be changing homes, literally, proverbially, um, but we're dealing with this really intense Pluto energy. So this week is all about soul growth. Pluto is a planet when we arrive at it, when we, whether it's what's called the conjunction, and we probably had the conjunction sometime in January if I'm doing my, my math correctly. Um, it starts this cycle of transformation. And right now Pluto is in Capricorn. So we're seeing a lot of our work as, a, as an individual, but also as a collective around Capricorn, power, control, money, ambition, what we're building in our, in our lives. And I'm getting a lot of Capricorn clients, Capricorn rising clients these days. So I know you guys are really feeling this, um, I'm calling it the wrecking ball. It's kind of these, the swings of uh, this proverbial Saturn Pluto wrecking ball. And I really, truly believe for, especially for a lot of people, it's like, I know we're, we're holding on to the old structures, but they have to come down because we need to be bigger. We need to do more in the world. We need to live our dreams more. And I, it's been coming up a lot with clients too. Um, we've been doing what we're supposed to be doing, Capricorn, for a very long time, but we are tired. We're burnt out. We're not being fulfilled the north nodes in Capric are in cancer right now so we really need to feel nurtured and to feel that we are being held and loved and that our life has substance there's that word again um, i'm just going to check in with some of the comments because i feel like some of them are really good you, yeah, you know, look where your north node is. If your north node is in Cancer right now, you're having what's called a nodal return. This happens every 19 years of your life. So age 19, age 38 um, are really important times in this, like getting back into alignment with why you came here and what you came here to learn. Um, just reading some more comments. Somebody asked about taking action, if I'm reading the uh, comment correctly. I know it's interesting, eclipse season is really pushing us to take action. I know Mars is in Leo right now, which is fire. It wants to take action. I think especially once the sun gets into Leo later this month, we're going to really want to take action. But then there's Mercury retrograde, which again, no need to freak out about Mercury retrograde. But it does mean that there is an element of 
not being able to move forward completely. We have we don't have all the information. We can't make a very clear choice, which is ironic considering we have what's called a Sun Saturn opposition tomorrow on Tuesday, June, July, July 9th. So we have to take there's a sense of needing to make some serious decisions tomorrow. Um, but maybe there's a sense that we have to table some things. We can't fully resolve our decisions. I think when we, you know, it's important to recognize that in addition to Pluto being in Capricorn right now, um, Saturn is also in Capricorn right now. And I, this is what I titled my report on Saturn and Capricorn when Saturn first went into Capricorn back in 2018, it's accountability. Everything right now is about accountability. How are we showing up in life? Are we showing up 20%? Or are we showing up 100% or 1000%? Because Saturn is really checking in on our accountability. And if you, for instance, if you're going through your Saturn return right now, if you um, are a Saturn and Capricorn generation, you're born 1988, 89, um, accountability is even doubly important right now. Uh, no, no cutting corners, no shortcuts. It's just feet in front of the other work. You're going through your Saturn return. You need to really step up to the high level of excellence, the bar that Saturn is setting for you right now. And in a way, we all, regardless of your, if you're 28 or 29, we're all really having to meet Saturn right now. Uh, and especially this week, and Saturn is, what am I doing with my life? How am I organizing everything? How am I handling responsibility? How am I being accountable? So keep in mind that some really intense energies running through this week or be between the eclipses. We've got Saturn that's really pressing us to make some serious decisions. It's as if mom or dad, the authority, the parent has come home and we have been not doing our homework, or maybe we have. And so Saturn is checking in on how we've been handling ourselves all by ourselves. Have we been doing our homework? Have we been doing what we said we're going to do? So this is a week to eat your vegetables, brush, brush your teeth, you know, eat your Wheaties. Maybe that's 1980s reference dating myself um also check in with more comments you know thank you to me like thank you for uh your feedback and i really do enjoy getting to share with you all so it's always funny when i get these very one-off comments that like I'm not doing my job um somebody else has chiron and taurus yeah i'm i'm we're in it uh that button around self-worth and value that just keeps getting impressed over and over again it's great i love it but here's the thing about chiron is that the work that we do personally to heal our chiron because chiron does talk about some level of a healing journey um is a gift to the world it's a gift to our community it's a gift to the collective when we heal something that has been a wound even though I'm not really a word I like to use with Chiron very often, um, it's inspirational. If we're somebody that has had no self-worth and we really rise to find it, then that's something that we can empower others to find their self-worth as well. Just scrolling through the comments. Yeah, we are definitely moving some furniture. Oh, new baby on the way. That's amazing. And, and uh, you know, that's the thing, um, even if we're literally pregnant or metaphorically pregnant right now, um, eclipses aren't always bad. They kind of mark our major highlights of our life. And sometimes that includes getting married or, or some sort of committed partnership, moving in with uh, you know, somebody that we want to build a life with. Or it's a baby starting a family. Maybe if you are carrying a child, you uh, you are you want to be pregnant, you want to start a family, you know, the, the North nodes in cancer, you know, this 
got this kind of a personal share, but I was at a July 4th barbecue and there was a two month year old, two month baby. And I was like getting misty eyed, you know, it was like that maternal instinct that was kicking in. Um, and I think that with the North node in cancer, it doesn't matter it, it, what you identify with or this idea that the cancer is this root feminine energy you know, the sun is this root masculine energy and we all have to find the balance between. And so however you identify, really nurture that internal uh, feminine and, and motherly energy because everything is in balance. And so mother yourself, take care of yourself right now. That's the North Node is in Cancer. Um, just thank you, Parker. And I'm happy to to, to turn, you know, have some FaceTime with you all because for a long time it was just behind a wall of words. I, you know, this is part of my own journey is being, you know, pushing myself out of my own comfort zone to be able to be visible, to be accountable to what I'm putting out there as an astrologer. Now you see a face with it. I'm not some invisible person on the internet. I know some of you are my clients, so we've definitely had some one-on-one -on -one time together, but uh, but thank you, Nicole, thank you for your your feedback. Um, oh, I'm sorry, your dog is 16 years old. Um, definitely big hugs. Um, I know that people are, you know, it's not an easy time when the eclipse is, not always, like I said, but it's often there's, it's, it's capital L, life, that's going on right now. And wouldn't you have it? It's like we have an eclipse and then, or we have a couple of eclipses and then it's all these other things that are going on. We've got the Pluto energy. We've got the Saturn energy. We have on July 11th, we have Mars square Uranus, which if you are an Aries or a Scorpio, you might be feeling this uh, a bit strongly this week. Uh, Mars square Uranus, it's very uh, restless. It like it's almost you know it's been in in like, have feeling cabin fever and it needs to do something, it needs to make a change. Um, my and I and I made this caution. You know I'm not trying to be an alarmist. It's just Mars square Uranus can be a little accident prone, so don't don't rush too much this week. Um, Mars can be a little hot headed. You know Mars and Leo can be a little bit. Um, ego driven. It can also be very creative, so I'm not trying to pick on Mars and Leo, um, but Uranus makes us just want to just kapow, just do things differently, run off and join the circus. Um, so it's, it's, you might be feeling this, like I said, if you are a Aries or a Scorpio, and I know that when Mars and Uranus make that square this week, um, it's doing so at we we have a Scorpio moon that time, so there might be that a lot of just deep emotions are coming up. I mean, I'm I'm feeling it too, guys. I was working with a friend. Um, she's in Lebanon. Um, she does a, you know, a type of work um, which I'm blanking on, and she's going to kill me. She's probably watching this. Um, it's a version of tapping. Um, I think it's called Matrix, and a lot of emotions came up for me, um, and so I just kind of felt like this squishy emotional marshmallow today and maybe you're feeling the same but you know we have to keep in mind that cancer energy we're in cancer season it's memories it's instinct it's nostalgia um we might be memories we don't even know where it's, it's where they're coming from might be coming up and with this work i had very strange and out of nowhere food memories um, it was like this sensation of eating fried rice when I was a kid at a Chinese restaurant. It kind of came out of nowhere. So moon energy, cancer season, because cancer is ruled by the moon, it's like a well. It's a well of memory. It's a well of sensation. It's subliminal. It's subconscious. It's something that's kind of running in the background. So all these little memories and feelings and dreams and you know, do we feel safe? Can we share? I think a lot of us just need to be wrapped up in a burrito and just sit on the couch and watch Netflix or something. Um, I think that's kind of what cancer energy is right now. Um, 
that said, I mean, in all, in all seriousness, it is a very productive, potentially a productive time. So don't shy away from difficult things, difficult conversations, difficult self exploration. Um, that button that keeps getting pressed in your life, whether it's self worth, whether it's your voice, Chiron is, is in Aries right now. Um, Chiron in Aries is when we don't have the bravery or courage to move forward. There's something there that's really prevented us, has made, maybe made us feel afraid to move forward. So maybe we need to find that courage this week to take that action, to move forward with something that maybe in the past we haven't had the courage to, to tackle. Um, so when we really do our work this week, um, I think it's going to have an impact. So again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't shy away from um, some of the stuff that's coming up. If, if you're the type of person that works with a therapist or works with a practitioner, then this is your week to work with them so that they can guide you through some of the things that they, you are feeling. Um, Patricia has Mars square Uranus Natalie, so you'll have to say in the comments uh, how that works out for you. I just have Mars square Saturn Natalie, so I can be very <laughs> regimented. I think Mars square Uranus needs a lot of freedom, needs a lot of movement, doesn't like to be tied down. And you know, before we kind of wrap up our Facebook Live time together, if you have if you have any comments about how this Eclipse Week is working for you, any, you know, hashtag Eclipse Stories, um, let me know. I want to hear how your Cancer Eclipse is going. And as we go into next week's um, full moon eclipse in Capricorn, um, yeah, this, I mean, I don't know how it felt for you all, but this Cancer new moon, maybe it was the fact that it had some support from Neptune. It felt a little, it felt a little quiet, to be honest. And maybe because Cancer is a very quiet energy. I think I'm a little more concerned about next week's lunar eclipse because it does join up with Pluto. And um, something that Spirit has shown me is that Pluto really helps us to see the soul. It's like a mirror. Um, so we might be dealing with a lot of shadow themes as we go into next week. Shadow themes just mean the stuff that's in our unconscious that we haven't wanted to heal or integrate or deal with. And then somebody in our life acts like that. Um, I had, you know, here's an example. I had a client who was dealing with a issue of bullying at work, but it was something that kept coming up in her life. And it was for her, the shadow work was that she needed to really own her power and really, I wouldn't say fight back, but stand up for herself. So maybe this is a week that we are standing up for ourselves. We are empowering ourselves against the things we normally are nervous or afraid of. Um, so really pregnant energy this week, very intense energy this week. The sun's in cancer. Make sure you are taking care of yourself. Um, if you have pets, sounds like people are having some things with pets going on. Just make sure your, your furry friends are also comfortable because, you know, they feel these earth energies as well. And eclipses means we often see earthquakes around eclipses. I mean, this is, there's a physiological side to all this, that, the, that there's a disconnection of something when the moon passes in front of the sun to create the total solar eclipse. So the earth is shaking, we're shaking, just give yourself some extra care, don't rush, Mars is square, Uranus, um, be, let's say a little bit more directed and how you use this energy. Um, maybe use it for a breakthrough, a personal breakthrough, uh, deciding to make a very different change or to go off in a different direction. But Mercury is retrograde, so we might be still working out the details into the end of July and into August. 
because Mercury will be retrograde until um, the 31st of July. And it will do so opposite Pluto, which is going to be a little potentially uncomfortable for my Geminis and my Virgos, if you're watching, because um, you're going to be kind of doing this long dance with Pluto into July. So it just might mean you're having to face yourself. You're having to transform um, on a deep, powerful level. And I know that Gemini in particular, I've been getting a lot of the Gemini, Gemini clients. Um, it, it's not an easy time for Gemini. You're having to really go into your underworld and to face some things that um, maybe you haven't wanted to face. So it's a lot of deep emotional work. Um, yeah, to me, the eclipse season definitely thins the veil in, in some way. Um, it's like, like I said, our, our reality, we, we have a very different relationship with our re reality in this moment. There's, it's, there's a sense of fate. We may meet somebody on the street that might be pivotal to our life. It's like that kind of energy. Um, the story is changing right now. So really, um, yeah, I know you guys were having, uh, uh, earthquakes in, in Southern California. I know my, I was checking in on my friends in LA. Um, but uh, yeah, earthquakes, little earth, literal earthquakes and proverbial earthquakes. So hang in there, you all. This is a quick weekly update, quick weekly check in. Um, I appreciate all of your comments. Yeah, Katie, like having your first therapist appointment this Friday is great. Um, I started therapy f when my was Saturn was going through my eighth house and I was like, all right, it's time to deal with a lot of stuff. <laughs> so it's always good to, um, there's a Greek word it's called psychopomp. Um, Mercury was one of the few beings that could go into the underworld. Um, this is your Greek mythology and this idea that we need somebody to guide us through the underworld and whether it's a therapist, a counselor, somebody else, we all need somebody to guide us. We can't navigate our underworld alone. I mean, we can, but it just gets really tiring. Um, so yes, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for all your comments um, on this Facebook Live and uh, maybe your future comments via email if you're watching this on the replay or via YouTube. Um, Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's Empowering Astrology. Kind of build up some, some people, some audience over there. Um, you can subscribe to my newsletter. That's in the links somewhere. Um, and I do put out a weekly newsletter. It does keep, help me keep you all updated on what's going on as well as events. I have a webinar on... Saturday at 4.30 p.m. New York time, which is 1.30 Los Angeles. I think that's 9.30 if I'm doing the math correctly for London. I, can't, I think it's 6.30 a.m. Sydney um, the next day. Again, you can always still register to receive the replay. This is meant to give you information about Pluto, but I really do want it to be something that guides you, like the psychopomp, like Mercury, into an underworld proverbial underworld, your own underworld, and then help you to come back out. Pluto is a planet that helps us transform. It helps us to see the soul and to see the soul's many different facets, to experience the shadow and to put light where there was darkness, because that's the work of consciousness, is putting light where there's darkness so we can make new decisions. Um, again, I also do consultations. So thank you all for those who are working with me. And for those who are thinking about working with me, um, you can go to empoweringastrology.com slash booking. Um, I have a list of services. I have an online booking calendar. So do take care of yourselves. Get each, be around salt water. It's cancer season. Take a nap whatever you need to do to take care of yourself at this time, but also use it productively because it is very powerful, transformative energy. 
and it is energy that's really trying to get us to let go of the things that we have been holding on to, these structures, the beliefs, the foundations, the, the bricks that we have put into our life so that we can put new things, new substance into our life. So much love to you all. And I look forward to connecting with you all on another Facebook Live. Bye.